Hey everyone, it's Ross. In today's video, I want to talk to you guys about some strategies that I'm going to be using in the wintertime to protect my figs. But it's only June 21st. Why am I kind of talking about winter protection so soon? Well, whatever we do here in the yard is going to be set up. It's always in our thought processes, in our mind about the wintertime. So the decisions we make now are going to impact later. Um, so this is really important for somebody like me in a colder climate that's growing a lot of these figs or even trees in pots is that you want to have some sort of plan for the winter time. And so far my plan has been find enough genetic variation, find enough varieties that could potentially do well here in a zone 7 climate. You plant them in the ground, they have the right genetics, they have the right microclimate and they will survive here unprotected. That was, that is the goal with many of these varieties. We have somewhere around 70 or so different varieties actually for that purpose to find out which of them is going to survive here. So far the only one that really does that is my hardy Chicago. Um, now I've come up with a different method here to increase my production because let's say those trees that I had just showed you didn't survive the winter time. And here's what is gonna happen. This is a very similar situation to what you would see is that the tree's gonna take a bit longer to wake up. It's gonna to have to have shoots that are coming from the base of the tree, from a lower point. They may even have to re-sprout from the roots. And that process just takes a bit of a longer time. A lot of cases what happens is that they re-sprout from the base and they come back too strong. They come back too vigorously and as a result, you can't even pinch them. They don't produce fruit. And all they wanna do for that entire year is to grow and grow and grow and, and attain the size that they were at the prior year. They kind of revert back to a form of immaturity is I guess one way of putting it. So what I've thought of is when doing that is that, okay, well, if we can just let them die back to the ground anyway, we put them in a microclimate here against the house. We have lots of rocks. We get lots of heat in this area. That'll warm up the soil quicker and then they're gonna wake up quicker. So it's not really gonna matter is if they get chopped back all the way down to the base because of cold, they're gonna re-sprout from the base, hopefully at a sooner point. But that doesn't solve the vigor issue is that they grow so quickly that they don't fruit. So what I've come up with in a prior video, we talked about girdling. And also pinching, really messing with the sap flow, messing with the auxin flow. If you've, you know, really tweak those numbers, tweak those hormones, tweak those different things, you can set these trees up that even if they were to be killed all the way down to the base, have to re-sprout from the roots, they could potentially fruit for you in that year. And I think that's also a pretty valid strategy, but of course not the best strategy. And I know a lot of you guys out there who watch my YouTube channel will always protect your figs in a similar climate to mine. There's some of you guys out there who will not let them do their own thing, who will not experiment. And you've experimented in the past probably and it didn't work out. Maybe you didn't have the right variety. Maybe you didn't have the right genetics. Maybe you didn't have the right microclimate, but that's all well and good. And a lot of you guys from that point on decided to just protect your figs every year by wrapping them, bending the limbs down to the ground and insulating them that way. I mean, there's so many methods of protection that we could talk about. But that's what a lot of you guys in the Northeast, a lot of you Italian guys out there, that's what you wanna do and that's fine. I agree with that because the difference between a tree that we showed you guys over here that has been killed all the way down to the base versus a tree that has survived because of wrapping it is a huge difference in terms of not only the production, the size, the health of the tree, uh, it just overall is gonna be a much better performer. I may get, you know, if I do everything right, let's see this Rondé Bardot that we looked at. If this tree were to come back from the base, it's been here in the ground for a number of years. This was just planted by the way, but let's say it comes back from the base, it's already been in the ground for a number of years. We got it in a nice microclimate. We got the right climate, 
in our spring. We have a nice year going. I could say maybe I could get, you know, maybe about 50 figs off of this tree before September 15th. I think that's pretty reasonable. But if I had a bigger tree and we had wrapped it and I had protected all the limbs and none of that took any cold damage, I'm looking at maybe 300 figs off of that tree. I mean, it's a really exponential difference in the amount of figs. Of course, it takes up more space, right? You have to protect them, you have to wrap it. Also, there's some work involved in the wintertime. It's not just, you know, uh, this is a guaranteed thing. You could also kill your tree by wrapping it. You could create mold. Um, too much humidity could get trapped in that wrapping that you did, and you'd have a huge issue. And I know a lot of people that wrap their trees and have done that. <laughs> um, so for me, I'm thinking of other alternatives. I think neither one of them is really the best scenario. Um, so what I've come up with here is something in the middle. And what we can do here is I've planted my trees out at a very close spacing here. I want to come over here and show you guys this because we have a row down here that's maybe about 12 or 13 fig trees. Another row down here that's maybe about 15 or so. Another row down here that's about maybe 10 or 11 fig trees. This is a really high dense spacing. We have between the rows is about three feet. And in the row is about two to two and a half feet spacing between the plants. And I'm thinking of even going closer. We're gonna to get to that in a minute. But with this spacing and what I can do is I can essentially come up with a really nice high dense planting like we had talked about with the Ron de Bordeaux is that if these trees for whatever reason they're not hardy enough they don't have the superior genetics that we're looking for out of thousands of varieties that exist they're not hardy Chicago they're gonna get killed all the way down to the base but again with all these rocks the right microclimate they're gonna re-sprout we can thin out the new shoots we can also mess with the auxins, reduce the sap flow by girdling or pinching, and then we can pinch for fruits and we can get a decent crop. And for the amount of space that this is all taking up, we can get even an actual pretty productive crop versus if we just had one big tree here that was say producing 300 to 500 fruits, you know, would it be worth it to have more trees in that space you know i don't know the answer i'm not entirely sure what you know is going to be uh better in the end but it's worth the experiment right um and now what i'm thinking here is again to do something in the middle between just letting them completely die back and wrapping them completely to protect them is that instead we were going to have even higher dense planting and what we can do every year is we can put more figs, that, this is my goal I think, is to actually put figs in the middle of these two rows and have them even closer, Another again, in the middle of these two rows in here. And what we're gonna do every single year is we're gonna cut them back to the base. And this is what some people do. Some people have tried training them low. You can train them as Japanese espaliers along the ground and just cover those limbs along the ground. And what you can do and what I'm thinking of doing is not really training them as a Japanese espalier, but all the new shoots that come up from the base, we just chop them back to a certain height in the wintertime. And then what we do is we cover that, we insulate that with some sort of insulation. I have a friend that uses concrete blankets, and those are mainly for curing concrete. They're very insulative, and they keep out that water. The only issue is that they're very expensive. Another alternative is that you can use lots of mulch, but I've seen mulch actually rot the bark. There's too much moisture underneath the mulch um, and it rots the bark and you end up not preserving any of that wood. Because if we preserve some of this wood, as an example, we chop it down to the base, we have a certain number of canes here, a certain number of trunks, that's gonna enable us to have a pretty good production the following year. They're not gonna have to re-sprout from the base they're gonna wake up probably a bit earlier. We're gonna have an earlier crop and we're gonna have a more productive crop that's somewhere in between what I had mentioned is that one, either wrapping them completely, protecting them completely, or two, letting them die back all the way down to the base. So it's somewhere in between that. And I think it's probably the best bet of all of them 
because then we can have them in a really close spacing here is that because we're always chopping them back we're never letting them get out of control we're never letting them get to a huge size and then by chopping them back and covering them that wood is then surviving and the following spring that wakes up again at an earlier time puts out more fruit and therefore is more productive um, so that is one little scenario here that I'm going to be using. I think instead of concrete blankets, I'm going to be using a tarp, a heavy duty tarp. We could also come in here with some other material that I'm not entirely sure of what I'm going to use just yet, but there's a lot of options. And I think uh, this is an option that should be strongly considered. And this is an option that even commercial growers could use if you guys wanted to. I know there is a commercial grower in the area that was doing this method. I'm not sure if he still is because now he has hoop houses and he's growing them under hoop houses, but I think this is a really nice system for somebody who wants nice production and doesn't necessarily need to have their tree survive every year. This kind of takes the hardiness out of the equation and instead we can focus on tastier varieties that do better in our humid climate. Um, so this is... Um, Overall, I think gonna be a really nice little scenario here in this location that I may protect them here in this location and do that method. Again, I'm still pretty hell-bent on seeing what varieties just survive. Finding that one variety or two varieties that have a good chance of survival here. And if that is the case, then we can plant more of those and have larger fig trees here and rely on those for the most part. But without a doubt, I think this is a more guaranteed method, is that even finding something that is genetically superior when it comes to hardiness, is that chopping them down to the base every year and then covering them is, is a guarantee that they're not gonna die. We do have to, I guess, watch out for rodents. I think I am gonna get an outdoor cat here and that's not gonna be an issue, but you can put rat poison underneath the tarps um, or traps, whatever you guys want. Um, but I think that is going to be a more consistent way of doing this in a colder climate. And I think it's also less work. Uh, rather than wrapping these trees every year, spending lots of time doing that, we could just be laying a tarp, cutting them all back, and then laying a tarp or laying some kind of insulation on top of the trees. I would imagine because these are a bit further spaced out, is that I'll let these guys fend for themselves. And we can have a nice little comparison, is that see how these do at the closer spacing, see how they do when they die back all the way to the ground compared to the trees that we protect when we insulate them. And maybe I'll even wrap a tree this winter time and see how that one does compared to all the others. You know, I think this is all really worthy of an experiment. This is certainly something um, that if we can really fine tune this, we can completely almost replace our potted figs. I really believe that is that growing them in the ground is going to net us way more fruit than in these pots. Um, probably at a slightly higher quality. Um, but without a doubt, I'm probably always going to be growing fig trees in the pots just because you can get a much earlier head start with the greenhouse or waking them up sooner by doing the fig shuffle. So that is the video here, guys, I wanted to show you. This is a topic that's been on my brain and I've been really excited about it. So thank you all for watching this one and we'll talk to you all soon, all right? Take care and I'm gonna keep you guys updated. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for all kinds of different types of content there, not just figs. And if you know somebody who likes figs and thinking about growing figs or grows figs in a colder climate, send them this video Share the channel with that person and get them involved. Get them interested in growing figs. All right, guys, take care. We'll see you for tomorrow's video. Talk to you soon.